friends welcome back to the channel my name is Christina today's video is going to be a quick overview of the user interface of bubble so let's hop right into it on my desktop so that we can kind of walk you through this really awesome app that I've been learning for the past two weeks first things first you'll see that you have three sections or two main sections actually you have a left side bar that has your items so you have design workflow and data and then styles plugins settings and logs and then you have this larger panel that is also on the left that has what we call elements and elements are these individual items that you can place on the page to kind of design out your page so let's quickly walk through this interface um, you're only going to use for the most part the top three items here so design workflow and data design is whatever is on your front end so it's whatever your user are shown are seen or are shown when they are on the page workflow is whatever is time it's anything that ties the design to the data so the workflow allows the app to work and have functions and data is basically everything that is involved in terms of any information that you want to save in your app so let's come back to design and most of the time you'll be in this layout trying to place things on the page and Every time that you want to do something or place an item on the page, you have to click on that item. So it doesn't matter if you're doing two buttons consecutively, you have to click on the button right before you want to put it on the page. That's something that annoys me a lot about this app, um, but it, you get used to it. And when you drop items in, you can either click like I just did to place, or you can click and drag to size the element and then do minor adjustments by dragging the boxes when you are um, done placing that item on the page. Okay. So this is a basic overview of how to place items on the page. Now I want to come back to this gray box that you see. This is basically a panel that is going to allow you to work with these elements however you want. So you can see that you can add notes or add text here. Whatever text you want will show up here. You can also insert dynamic data. So dynamic data is basically any type of data that is based on the data in here instead of just static. So static and dynamic is different and then you want to make sure you always always name your elements because if it's all button E and F you won't know which one it's referring to when you are getting ready to tie your data to your design via the workflow so you just want to make sure that you name every one of these by typing in a name for the the element so to show you what this is let's go ahead and click on this item and go into the workflow see how it says button by me is clicked usually it'll say button b is clicked and you won't know what button b is um, but if you say button by me then you know that it's your buy button and so if you also don't know what this element is referring to then you can just hover and hold leave your cursor on that block and you can see that it gives you a quick preview of that element. I think that's really nice. And to do a workflow, you simply make sure you click on whatever element and then you can start and edit the workflow and you can tell it to do things like setting up an account, logging in the user. You can tell them to go to a page, refresh a page. Everything is here. I'm still getting used to this. I know there's a lot of things that it can do, but if you already know what you want, you can type in the action and you can just find what you want okay pro tip here is make sure you name all your elements and make sure they are unique so you can kind of find them and you will also use them when you are creating your workflows within the gray dialog box so it's just helpful to make sure you name these and we talked about this and this this is a page kind of navigation for your builder so you can navigate to any of these pages and you can also have reusable elements so these are elements that are um, things that you can uh, reuse over and over and over again so that's why they're here so you can just add them to your page every time so things like your header your footer anything that you want to kind of appear globally that's where you want it to be here here is the issue fixer so if you have any problems with your app if you miss and putting something, they will give you a little notice of this issue. You click on this and then you can click into that and it'll take you to whatever is not working. And then once you have something selected and it's valid, the issue will go away. So that's really nice. 
And here you'll also see a preview. So this is whatever is here will show up in your preview. So you can see that it is the same here and here and that it is very, very, um, what you see is what you get. If you need to install more items, you can click on install more at the very, it's the very last option for each of these sections, right? So you can just install more. Um, one quick caveat for this is the more you install, the heavier the app gets, which means the slower it can become. So you just want to make sure you pick the items that you definitely are going to use within that app to put into the panel. And data. Data is its, its own kind of uh, video, but a quick overview is this is where you create all the data types that you're going to collect and work with. So the first three things that you'll actually work with most are data types, privacy, and app data. Data types are basically you creating all the fields that you want to collect. And if you want to do that, you just simply click create a new field, add the name of your field. So let's say I want to do last name and I click on text and create. So that is how I will create my field. And if I want to delete, I simply click on the trash can and it will remove that for me. And privacy is really its own um, video, but um, this is where you define who can see what part of the app. And I won't get into it because I'm still learning this myself, um, but you can set different rules for different types and different users. App data is everything that you are using to run your app. So the most basic one that the default one that the app sets you up with in Bubble is all users because every app will have users. And so that's what this is. And to kind of get rid of all these things that you don't need, you can modify the display. Usually there's one here that says edit what you can see, but for now, because we have everything selected, I think it's fine. Um, let's see. Okay, so that is data and workflow and design. Um, coming back to this one, if you come back to this one, you'll notice that there are three tabs. There's appearance, conditional, and transitions. Conditional is um, anything that you want to set up that um, kind of makes this more complicated. So this, let's say, button can turn into something else when you click on it or whatever. Um, so this is where you'll do it. Um, transitions is basically like the animation style. I haven't used these too much in the first two weeks that I've used the Bubble app, so I'm not going to get too deep into these. Um, for now, the appearance is all here and you can kind of edit and you can also kind of edit the styling. So it's very flexible and it's super customizable to whatever you want it to be. Um, and that is it for this video. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments and I'm happy to answer them as much as possible. But I'm very new to Bubble, but I'm really excited excited to learn more about what it can do and hopefully this really quick video about what to do hopefully this video um, will help you hopefully this video is helpful for anyone just starting out to create a, their first app or just playing with bubble to understand how to work with the interface and to make it less intimidating and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and i'm happy to answer them as much as possible and we will see you in the next one